Hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Ibrahim Haddad, and I am the Executive Director of LFAI and Data Foundation, formerly known as the LFAI Foundation. I will be speaking to you today about the role LFAI and data is playing in supporting the open source AI and data ecosystem. First, one major news we have is that the LFAI Foundation is combining forces with the ODPI under a new name, which is the LFAI and Data Foundation, where we represent AI and uh, data in terms of efforts, where LFAI has been focused on AI, machine learning, and deep learning, and ODPI has been focused on open source data. So, I will do a little uh, both initiatives, both projects, before I, I go deeper into the presentation. So the ODPI project has been launched in February of 2015 with the initial goal of announcing and supporting the development of the open data platform. Uh, and since then has been uh, going and iterating into multiple specifications and uh, efforts and development efforts, including the Egeria project, the OpenDS for all project, and more recently the BI and AI project. Um, and today, uh, as of uh, January 2019, basically, uh, Egeria 1.0 has been released, which was a major release, and then in addition to a performance test uh, and um, program. And uh, in 2019, Open uh, DS for All, as I mentioned, has been accepted into incubation project. As far as LFAI, the LFAI Foundation has been launched in uh, March of 2018 with one incubation project uh, and nine uh, launching numbers. Uh, and throughout the 2018-2019, uh, we've had some busy time in terms of growing the foundation, uh, adding additional projects into incubation, and launching various efforts, and basically getting into the uh, mode of supporting collaboration across projects and throughout uh, the ecosystem. In 2020, we've had an incredible uh, growth in terms of projects that we host in the foundation where we were adding on average one new project every single month, in addition to a number of events uh, that you can see on the screen uh, as part of supporting our communities and the project communities in getting together and uh, supporting collaboration efforts and integration efforts across these different projects. So we are coming together at FAI and ODPI combined bring developers from both organizations and projects under the single umbrella foundation uh, with the orchestration uh, of a single technical steering council or committee uh, in addition to a number of other committees that are active such as the tested AI committee, the BI and AI committee and all of those committees and projects will work together towards supporting the open source AI and data ecosystem. Uh, from a Guidance to our end users, uh, a unified approach uh, is highly appreciated in terms of providing guidance on interoperability across projects, integration, standards, and the future of AI, data, and analytics in general, as we see that uh, these uh, domains will continue to grow in every single industry out there. Uh, furthermore, coming together, we will enable closer operation across our project, AI projects and data projects. We will uh, facilitate integration across these different projects and interoperability. And this has been a proven recipe that when we host projects under a single umbrella foundation, it allows us to enable that type of collaboration and build a stronger ecosystem. And of course, as members of different organization uh, and having members that care about all these different projects coming together will allow us a lot of efficiencies when it comes to the value services we offer to our incubated projects. So let's have a look at the ecosystem. Uh, this basically is a screenshot of the LF AI and Data Foundation landscape. It is accessible from l.lfai.foundation. As you can see, it's a thriving ecosystem that uh, we capture in the landscape. And this is purely focused on what we call top tier projects. And we have, I think, about 12 or 15 different categories within that landscape. So a category is machine learning, deep learning, uh, data models, distributed computing, uh, education, uh, security and privacy, and so on. And of course, within each of these categories, 
uh, we may have multiple subcategories. So if you look at the top left, machine learning, we have subcategories of framework, platforms, libraries. And as you can see, there are about 300 top tier projects divided across this uh, various categories. And what you will notice is in some of these subcategories, there are a lot of projects that are competing and providing similar functionalities. So if you look under, uh, for instance, machine learning platforms, there's about maybe 10 to 12 different projects there. If you look at deep learning frameworks, there are 12 different projects. If you look at deep learning, there are nine plus uh, libraries that offer like, these different functionalities. Uh, so uh, I think it's a very thriving ecosystem, a lot of projects, and this landscape represents the work of over 35,000 developers who are actively contributing to these different projects. However, despite the growth and, um, um, and the high number of activity within that ecosystem, there are some various challenges. These are challenges related to fragmentation and lack of integration across projects. Uh, some of the challenges are related to how projects are being governed. Uh, and other challenges are related to the fact that a lot of these projects started as proprietary internal efforts um, to contribute to a given product or a feature in the product. And with time, companies realize that, um, that it is better to open source these different efforts and focus instead on data and models and applications, which is where uh, the revenues will come from and not necessarily from the actual platform or library or framework. And other challenges that could arise and are uh, have been experienced are related to uh, if, when the project becomes successful, who's going to manage the project assets, you know, who's going to manage the trademark uh, export filing, export control filing, um, who's going to pay for the website, who's going to pay for the various build systems and, and um, AWS credits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and all of these together, all these different challenges uh, create what I refer to as a glass ceiling uh, for investing in the project and adopting it. And this is how LFAI originally came about in March of 2018 to actually address these different challenges and support uh, a growing open source AI ecosystem. And of course, we're all aware of the advantages of open source uh, from the ability to access the code and change it and its flexible license model and the ability to influence development via contribution uh, and peer review and et cetera, et cetera. However, from an open source uh, AI perspective, there are a lot of very specific benefits that are unique to AI, such as uh, the transparency and the open development model, which lend a lot of credibility to different areas within AI. Uh, we have fairness, which are methods to detect uh, and mitigate bias in models and data sets. There's the concept of robustness, uh, which is the uh, methods to detect tampering with data set and models. There's the concept of explainability, which are methods that will help us enhance understandability of uh, models. And of course, there's the concept of lineage, which will help us ensure provenance of data sets and AI models. And all of these different, very important uh, concepts in AI would benefit from the open and transparent development and peer reviews that we have in the open source methodology. And underneath all of these different concepts, we have the open data, which are methods that will allow us to clean and sort and track the provenance of data in addition to a governance structure for doing all these different things. And this is basically the, uh, combined efforts of LFAI and data uh, to bring together both these organizations uh, to further support the collaboration and acceleration of AI, machine learning, deep learning, and data. Uh, so why are we harmonizing and uh, organizing uh, in this uh, way? It's to improve interoperability across these different projects that we host separately. Now they're going to be hosted together, enable closer collaboration across this different project uh, with the support of the single technical advisory council representing our collective membership, uh, providing uh, unified guidance to our end users, and also achieving uh, efficiencies, as I mentioned uh, earlier. And all of these together will help us drive towards building a strong open source AI and data ecosystem. How are we going to be structured? Uh, this is very similar to the LFAI 
foundation structure as we carry the structure forward. We have a governing uh, board on the left hand side underneath which we have several different committees that are spinned off by the governing board. In the middle of the screen, you see uh, the technical coordination body, which is called Technical Advisory Council, under which we have uh, three different uh, committees, the ML Workflow and Interoperability Committee, the Trusted AI uh, Committee, which is focused on trusted and responsible AI ethics in general, and the BI and AI Committee. And on the right-hand side, we have the hosted projects, and each of these hosted projects in LFA and data have their own independent technical governance. Uh, and um, they are enabled by a variety of services that we offer uh, to them. So what are the major efforts we have in the foundation? We have uh, a, an effort to provide a neutral environment and an open governance for our projects that will foster collaboration. Uh, how we're doing this is basically, as you can see in the bottom of the screen, uh, we, we are vendor neutral, we're not for a profit organization, we have open governance and a lot of IT clarity around. Uh, how we work. Uh, we have an effort focused on harmonization and interoperability that's driven by the Technical Advisory Committee um, and it offers a lot of opportunities for projects to integrate uh, and to create collaboration not just within LFA and data but with other Linux Foundation uh, projects. We have a focused project on trusted and responsible AI uh, supported by three core projects in this area and training that we're offering for free on the edX platform. Uh, we have a, a focused effort on data and uh, a number uh, of projects that are data specific in addition to the BI and AI committee, which drive uh, specific efforts in, in that space. Uh, we offer a, an open source model marketplace and a number of supporting tools. And the last uh, major effort we have is to provide funding and awareness. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of efforts that are basically combined under this umbrella. Uh, there's a funding model. Uh, we have a number of events uh, in relation to the projects we host as uh, individually and collectively, and a lot of services that we offer the projects in terms of marketing legal events uh, and uh, program and project management. Our membership uh, represent uh, some of the leading technology projects uh, and companies. Uh, as you can see, we have three tier of membership. The premier tier is the board represented companies. Uh, and then the general tier is any company can join us at the general level of membership. And you can see there's, there are a number of them. And uh, the third tier is what we refer to as the associate level of membership. And this level of membership is dedicated for universities, uh, government labs, research institutions, and other nonprofits. And it is actually a, a free membership uh, with uh, the full benefits of a general membership. Uh, in terms of what we host today, at, at the time of recording this talk, 22 projects. And I estimate that by the end of the year, we will have around 25 projects hosted in LFAI and data. So, what does it mean to be a foundation project? Uh, you will be, as a project, you will be hosted in a neutral environment that increases the willingness of companies to adopt the project and also to contribute to it. You will have the endorsement of our members via the Technical Advisory Committee. Um, we will support the project with an open and neutral governance model, which is something that is uh, critical and is mandatory for all of our projects. Uh, we have uh, staff, full-time staff that are dedicated to support the project from a project and program management sources. Uh, as well from a marketing perspective, PR perspective, uh, events, uh, legal support, in addition to a specific presence in different geographies that will allow to support the project in these different geographies in person. One of the favorite slides I'd like to present is who are the companies hosting projects in LFA and data? And as you can see, we have a really a, a very um, interesting slide with, you know, showcasing really top tech companies across uh, the whole globe from North America to Europe to Asia. So we have uh, really a, a great lineup of companies hosting uh, with us. And this is really a great testament that these companies trust LFAI and data in incubating their projects and driving them to grow their uh, community of users and community of, of contributors and 
helping them get to a leadership position within their category, technology category. So why do these companies host projects with us? As the Linux Foundation, uh, we are the leading organization, leading commons for community assets. Uh, we have over 20 years history in hosting projects uh, at, and recognized and known as a respected brand and a brand that supports uh, open source communities and projects. Uh, we are the largest open source foundation providing uh, management of assets for over 400 projects that are hosted. Uh, and uh, with over 1500 members that are members of the Inks Foundation, we have access to really magnificent number of resources uh, and audience uh, to try to draw uh, users and contributors to the different projects. Uh, so why would you want to incubate uh, a project with LFAI and data? Uh, we have a lot of efforts focused on events. Uh, we manage the IP of the projects and we provide a number of legal services uh, to all the projects. We provide uh, training services that are free training services and available uh, via the LX platform. We have a number of certification efforts that have been proven to be extremely useful and uh, we are able and have the ability to design and execute both software and hardware testing certification program. Uh, we have a number of developer marketing efforts uh, in addition to very proven and tested developer operations. Uh, in addition to all of that, we also have uh, different services in relation to security where we, whereby we audit uh, and can test different projects. We offer bug, bug bounties, dependency analysis, and of course, source code scanning services to all of our projects. In addition to all of that, we have a very strong marketing PR efforts in support of all projects, uh, ranging from a blog to announcements, white papers, posters, presentations, uh, and uh, promoting project releases, new features, uh, et cetera, et cetera. In addition to the marketing efforts, we also have our event services. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we have different types of events. Some are focused on a specific project and some are focused on the foundation and its collective efforts in terms of projects. Uh, we have the LFAI Summit. Uh, obviously, this is all the branding uh, and we are moving towards LFAI and data summit, LFAI and data days. Uh, and we hold these in different geographies and uh, in um, different uh, major events, such as the Open Source uh, Summit across all of its editions in Europe, uh, China, and North America. If you're interested to incubate projects with us, uh, our technical advisory committee uh, is responsible for boarding in new projects into incubation in the foundation. They meet every two weeks. Uh, and they are generally booked uh, four to six weeks in advance. Uh, to learn more about proposing projects for incubation, please follow the link on the slide, and I'm more than happy to have a call with you and discuss uh, the specifics and the process itself. Uh, joining LFAI and data is very easy. Uh, you can follow the link on the chart, uh, which will land you directly into the website where you can learn about the different levels of membership, the fees, uh, and the benefits. Uh, in addition, we have presence across various channels, as you can see on the screen, and to reach out uh, to us directly, please feel free to send us a note at info at lfai.foundation. And as I mentioned, we're moving towards info at LFAI data and dot foundation. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I really appreciate uh, that you took time to listen to my presentation. And uh, please, if you'd like to reach out to me, get a copy of the slides or have a discussion around incubating projects or joining LFAI, please send a note to info at lfai.foundation uh, and I will be more than happy to connect this. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the portion of the LFAI Virtual Mini Summit 2020 uh, for Open Source Summit Europe. Uh, this section, is going to be an update on the Linux Foundation AI Technical Advisory Council, the TAC, as well as the ML Workflow and Interop Committee. And uh, this is happening Thursday, October 29th, 2020, uh, from 6.15 to 6.30 Pacific Time, recorded. I'm Jim Spore. Uh, I'm the director of IBM's Cognitive Open Technology Group, uh, also 
uh, referred to as our Center for Open Source Data and AI Technologies, CODAY. Uh, I also want to um, uh, just mention that I'm also the elected chairperson of the Technical Advisory Council for this year running, and um, also a member of the Onyx Steering Committee. And uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or on Twitter or also uh, the LFAI Slack. Those are all three great ways to get a hold of me. And if you have any questions uh, or comments or would like to explore anything that I present in this presentation today. So let's begin with the fact that the uh, Linux Foundation AI TAC or Technical Advisory Council meets uh, once every two weeks. We meet on Thursdays uh, at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time and uh, every other week we're meeting. Uh, who's welcome? Really everyone interested in open source uh, AI and data. Uh, we're super excited to uh, have uh, people who are working on open source projects join. Uh, we also have uh, people from companies joining. We have people from universities, uh, nonprofits. All are welcome to join and find out um, about what we're doing in Linux Foundation. AI and data. And speaking of Linux Foundation AI and data, we're super excited about the merger, uh, which at the time of this recording hasn't been announced yet, but at the, uh, the time you're hearing this, uh, we, we have announced the fact that Linux Foundation AI merged with uh, ODPI, and that merger is now called uh, Linux Foundation AI and data. Super excited about that. Uh, we also have a code of uh, conduct that you can uh, read about on our uh, website. So who presents at the TAC calls, these technical advisory call uh, meetings every every other week? Well, certainly we invite um, uh, open source projects to present. Uh, a lot of uh, the presenters are just telling us about their open source project, making us aware of it. Uh, some of them are uh, interested in potentially hosting their project at the Linux Foundation AI and Data someday. Um, and uh, also, uh, as part of the presentations, we, um, you know, have committee presentations. There's a couple different uh, committees of LFAI that I'll be telling you about in a little bit. And, and really, uh, you know, it's easy to find uh, examples of presentations that have happened at the TAC because uh, we actually uh, record them. Uh, we send out uh, a, a deck uh, every two weeks to our uh, uh, TAC general mailing list so they can see uh, what will be presented. We also uh, post recordings of all of our TAC calls in minutes. So you can, you can actually look down through and see, for example, on October 8th, we invited the Trusted AI presentations. These are three projects that are in incubation at LFAI to give us updates. Um, sometimes the presentation, for example, on September 24th, a feast uh, project uh, requested to become an incubation project. That was a successful vote. We're now an incubation project. On um, August 13th, the Horavoid project, which had been an incubation project, uh, presented uh, their readiness to be a graduated project of the uh, Linux Foundation AI. So you can scroll down through and it's, I really recommend uh, joining a call. It's better than listening to a recording. Uh, but um, also you can uh, subscribe to the mailing list. Again, uh, you know, tag generallist.lfai.foundation. And you can find all of this at, uh, you can get here by going to uh, wiki.lfai.foundation. If you just remember lfai.foundation, uh, put wiki in front of it, uh, put list in front of it, and you can uh, find, find these various things. And I'll review all this at the end. I've got a slide that, um, that reviews all of these things. So um, back to the presentation. You know, what happens on these uh, biweekly TAC calls? Again, we do voting. Uh, on when to host incubation projects and when to host graduation projects. This is a great example of a project Uber brought us called Horavoid as an incubation project way back in the beginning. Uh, you can see it had steady growth, more contributors, um, multiple organizations using it. 
and uh, just recently in uh, August of 2020, uh, it was ready for graduation. And we do have criteria. So we have criteria on, you know, what a project has to be like to be hosted at the Linux Foundation. You know, companies have to transfer the trademark. Um, they have to transfer all the login rights to the social media and the um, uh, GitHub uh, repos because what we found is the best way for open source projects, if you really want them to grow, if you really want them to be sustainable over the long term, they shouldn't be associated with an individual company. They should really be in a foundation under multi-vendor open governance. That's really the best way to help uh, projects grow and be sustainable over the long term. Um, we also uh, annually elect a chairperson to preside over these meetings. I'm the current elected uh, chairperson. Oprah Hermoni uh, was the chairperson before me. Um, this coming spring, there'll be another election. There'll be a new chairperson for the Linux Foundation AI Technical Advisory Council. So please do uh, join the meeting, look at the recordings. If you've got projects you'd like to put into incubation, we do occasionally when a project moves in, if it's a pretty mature project, for example, Onyx was an example of this. The Onyx project came in as an incubated project. When we merged with ODPI, the Ageria project came in as a, uh, I'm sorry, as a graduated project. So Onyx is a graduated project. Ageria is a graduated project. They came in the Linux Foundation. AI is graduated projects because they were pretty mature. Typically though, new projects come in from a single vendor. They're looking for help uh, from the Linux Foundation AI to become multi-vendor, to grow the usage. And uh, so it's more normal to come in as an incubation project like Coravoid did from Uber. And, and after a year or so of growth and, and additional um, uh, a, a governance committee being set up, uh, graduating. These are the current uh, TAC voting members. Actually, there'll be even more. <laughs> uh, it won't be announced till October 26th, this merger between uh, LFAI and ODPI, but that will add some new uh, uh, premier members of the uh, Linux Foundation AI and data. So if you're a premier member, you get a voting seat on the, the TAC. Also, if you're a graduated project, you get a voting uh, seat on the TAC. So these are the organizations and here are the people, here are their contact emails, the ones who are voting on whether a project becomes an incubation project, uh, whether a project becomes a graduated project, uh, who will be the next uh, TAC uh, chairperson. Um, now, there are also two, there are meetings, monthly meetings for two of our committees. There's other committees besides these, but these are two of the technical committees. There's the Trusted AI Committee, which is co-chaired by uh, three people, uh, one from IBM in North America, uh, one from Orange in Europe, and one from uh, Tencent in Asia. So uh, Trusted AI, obviously responsible AI is a very, very important topic. We wanted to have uh, co-chairs from all the different geographies to, to address all of the different issues that are coming up in geographies. Uh, the other uh, technical uh, uh, committee is the ML Workflow and Interop Committee. You can imagine with a growing set of open source projects, how do they interoperate is a big, big issue. How do they sequence together in pipelines and workflows a big issue. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit more about this one. Someone else will be presented to the uh, Trusted AI Committee shortly. Also, as a result of the LFAI and ODPI merger, we now have a new committee uh, called the, the BI and AI, the Business Intelligence and Artificial Intelligence Committee, um, which is uh, uh, chaired by uh, Cupid Chan, Chan from uh, 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 Analytics uh, Company. So let's talk just a little bit about, just to give you a flavor of the uh, ML workflow and interop committee. When Ofer was our chairperson in 2019, he mapped out this machine learning stack. Uh, we mapped all of the different uh, projects that are in LFAI incubating and graduating onto this. We mapped other interesting projects from the landscape onto this and um, made quite a bit of progress thinking about how different projects fit together 
uh, and interoperate. And by the way, that's a great way to start reaching graduation is when you start interoperating with other uh, projects. That's also a criteria for coming into the Linux Foundation AI's hosted project. You have to see synergies with some of the other existing projects. So, so this was uh, work that was done in 2019. Uh, in 2020, Howie Wang from Huawei is our uh, chairperson. And he's been introducing a new framework that we're using to start thinking about uh, northbound applications and southbound uh, frameworks and back end and how do we get deeper uh, interoperation of the project. Now here's my uh, one of my last slides. This is really the call to action. So if you're listening to this recording, uh, stick around. I'll be uh, showing up for the live Q and A, but um, uh, I really encourage you to go out and study the uh, Linux Foundation AI landscape. Over 300 projects. Ibrahim has already told you about this, but you know each of these cards is is interactive. So, for example, Feast just came in as a as an incubation project. So when you uh, you know click on the uh, Feast card here, uh, it brings up information about Feast. And uh, the one, the cards that are a little larger, these are the projects that are part of Linux Foundation AI and data. The ones that are a little smaller are, are you know, you can find uh, organization shorts, uh, sorts of this list so you can see which organization uh, they're part of. Um, also, um, study the Linux Foundation AI technical projects. If you go out to https colon slash slash LFAI dot foundation uh, brings you here and you can get uh, information about the members, the charter, how to join, a code of conduct, how to contact us, projects, all the projects, the trusted AI projects, uh, graduated projects, um, events, uh, people on the governing board or elected officers, our staff, uh, various resources, and of course a newsroom about events. So really encourage you to uh, uh, explore this and, and join one of the calls. Also, again, um, review the recordings. I've already shown you um, that we have uh, all of the TAC calls are recorded. Um, uh, their uh, deck is sent around to TAC General on the mailing list. The minutes are recorded. So please do uh, also check out the recordings if you're interested in a particular project in the landscape. You might or um, that's hosted at LFAI, you might go check out the deck and recording. And if you're thinking about hosting a project at LFAI, that's a great way to, to uh, learn about what kind of slides you have to prepare, what's the steps. Also, you can find that information um, on, uh, under projects here. There's uh, information about host your project. Why would you want to host your project? How do you go about hosting a project? Um, there's information about the proposal process, a very short, one, two page. It's not, um, typically it can be done in an hour or two. A lot of the information comes from GitHub and uh, you can be on your way to getting a, a project reviewed for hosting and voted on by the, uh, uh, the, TAC, the Technical Advisory Council. So um, uh, also, join the LFA at Slack. That's a great way to introduce yourself, get involved, get updates. Uh, and if your organization is interested, there's also a link here uh, for that. So here's some reminder uh, URLs. Again, if you remember the four letters, lfai.foundation, that'll take you to the website. You put wiki in front of that and get out to the wiki where we have these recordings. Uh, github.com slash lfai if you want to see what's on GitHub. Um, and list.lfai.foundation takes you to the mailing list. And then, of course, we also have events pages, calendars you can subscribe to. And, um, you know, I'll be uh, 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 around for the live uh, Q&A as well. So I'll stop the recording here and look forward to uh, chatting with folks during the live. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I am Saishruti Swaminathan and I work as a data scientist and developer advocate in IBM Codai team. Codai stands for Center for Open Source Data and AI Technologies. Today, I'm going to share about goals and work 
that is being done under LFAI Trusted AI Committee. Here is a chance for you all to join us in building a trust and transparent AI community. I'm happy to share that I'm one of the committee members and I'm sure after the session, you will join us and help us build a better community together. Let's get started. LFAI Trusted AI Committee Goals. Let's start with the goal of our committee. LFAI is an umbrella foundation of the Linux Foundation. LFAI, which is Linux Foundation AI, aims to create a sustainable open source ecosystem by open sourcing artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning projects. LFAI Trusted AI is a global group under LFAI focusing on infusing trust and transparency into AI applications. First, let's see scope of LFAI Trusted AI Committee. First, to define policies, guidelines, tooling, and use cases by industry to create a responsible and trusted AI applications. Number two, create a badging process for open source projects that meet the trusted AI policies and guidelines as defined by LFAI. So these two are the scopes of LFAI Trusted AI Committee. Next slide. Now let's see about the working groups. This committee has two working groups, principles groups and use cases group. First, let's see about the principles group. What do they do? This group defines ethics, guidelines, and principles for trusted AI projects. Next group is use cases group. This group defines and implements trusted AI use cases within different AI projects and domains. So just to reiterate, we have two groups. One is the principles working group and the next one is use cases working group. Next, trusted AI projects. So now we are getting into the projects that are under LFAI trusted AI group. So to start with, IBM has donated three of their trusted AI projects to LFAI in July 2020, and they are currently being incubated. So the projects that uh, you know have been donated are AI Finance 360 Toolkit, AI Explainability 360 Toolkit, Adversarial Robustness Toolkit, and they are currently being incubated under LFAI Trusted AI. So now let's quickly go over like those three projects, like a very high level overview of what these three projects are. To start with, we'll see about AF360, which is AI Finance 360. AI Finance 360 package is available in both Python and R. It contains a set of metrics and algorithms for detecting and mitigating bias in data and machine learning models. We have over 70 metrics for examining bias and 10 algorithms for mitigating bias. So when we talk about fairness, right? The word fairness is not an easy thing to define. It varies, it is multifaceted, it depends on the context and it is defined by social construct. So our toolkit, is useful towards achieving justice in many situations, but can't fully capture fairness in all the situation, right? So this particular process requires a broad discussion with the multiple stakeholders in your development process. And we, it's good to get input uh, from different stakeholders on overall de decision making workflows. So this toolkit will be an excellent starting point 
to have a broader discussion about fairness in your application. And this toolkit only works when, you're, when the problem that you want to solve is well defined. We have built tutorials around demonstrating industrial use cases using the toolkit. And to make your life easy, we also provide guidance material that will help you choose metric and algorithm as per the application need. You can use this tutorial at any point in the pipeline. By this I mean, you can use this toolkit during the data preparation phase. Let's say you don't have access to the data preparation phase process. Now, you can use, you can use this toolkit in the model development phase. Let's say you don't have uh, you know, access to either data preparation phase or the model development phase, but you have access once the model is trained. So now you can take this toolkit and use them on the trained model to examine and mitigate bias. And there are a lot of interesting stuff this toolkit has, and I would highly encourage you to go to the page and know more about it and contribute to the project as well. Now, let's get into AIX360, which is AI Explainability 360. AI Explainability 360 Toolkit is an open source library to help explain AI and machine learning models and their predictions. This includes three classes of algorithm, local postdoc, global postdoc, and directly interpretable explainers for models that use image, text, and structure or tabular data. This is a Python package that includes a comprehensive set of explainers, both at global level and local level. First, they use contrastive techniques to explain model behavior in the vicinity of the target data point. It identifies features, it weighs the features, which are most important for the prediction and also least important for the prediction. It also displays factors that influence a prediction in a very simple term. Finally, it provides explanation in terms of top K features which played key role in the prediction. And again, if you want to know more details about the toolkit, please feel free to visit the toolkit page on the repository to know more and to learn how to use them. And the last one is Adversarial Robustness Toolkit. Is a Python library for machine learning security, and we call it this toolkit as ART. ART provides tools that enables developers and researchers to define and evaluate machine learning models and applications against the adversarial threats of evasion, poisoning, extraction, and inference. ART supports all popular machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow, Keras, and all data types and machine learning tasks. So these are the three projects under LFAI Trusted AI that are currently being incubated. If you want to know more about these projects and also the work that is that are being carried out under this committee, please do join us in Data Science Seed online meetup happening on October 23rd. And I have links in the presentation in case if you want to join and know more about these projects in the work. And this is something exciting. So we have launched a YouTube series to walk through our projects as well as the work. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel to keep yourself updated. There are a lot of new videos coming in and we have experts talking about the toolkits. We have experts talking about the projects and the workflows and the roadmap and you know what is currently happening you know, in the committee and so on. So please feel free to subscribe and, you know, uh, help us in building, not help us, I would say, like, let's all build together, like a trustworthy and transparent AI community. And I think all this made you, made you all you know, super interesting, you're, you're all excited. I'm sure now you want to be a part of this discussion, right? You want to be a part in building this community and I have a way for you.
as you can see on the screen, if you go to the wiki page of uh, LFA Trusted AI Committee, you can follow the instruction under the mailing list and meeting here. First, to add yourself to our mailing list, follow the instruction on our mail list and also subscribe to our calendar so that you are updated with the meeting schedule uh, using the instructions provided under meeting. So the wiki page link is in the presentation. Feel free to you know subscribe and join us in our monthly calls. Next, if there's a separate procedure if you want to be a part of principal's working group. And we have a separate wiki page for principal's working group. And please contact Susan Malaika if you'd like to join. And they have a detailed set of documents that explains the current work and the past work and what are they planning to do in future. So it's a very interesting and informative document. Please visit the wiki page to know more about the principal working group. And here is the Slack invite for three of our projects. If you want to interact with the contributors, committers and maintainers and want to know how to use the toolkit and where to use the toolkit, please feel free to join the Slack channels and you know, start the interaction with the other community members as well as committers, contributors and maintainers of the project. Yes, so we have come to the conclusion. I would like to conclude with these resources for you all to take back and explore more about the committee and be a part of this wonderful journey. Thanks again for giving me this opportunity to connect with you all today and hope you have a great conference session. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to give a project update for Amundsen. First of all, let me give a bit of intros about myself. My name is Tao. I'm a staff engineer at the Leaf Data Platform and Tools team. I'm a Apple PMC and Apache Apple PMC and committer. At Live, I'm working on different data products, including like Airflow ETL platforms on Monsens, and also leading the data organize data of why cost attribution effort. Previously, I work at LinkedIn and Oracle. So let me introduce Amundsen. So what is Amundsen? In a nutshell, Amundsen is a data discovery metadata platform for improving the productivity of data analysis, data scientists, and engineers when interacting with data. Amazon is currently hosted at Linux Foundation AI, aka LFAI, as its incubation projects with open governance and RSC process. For those who have interest, I wrote a blog post about the whole experience. Amazon, here is a uh, allow you to search data. Here is the landing page for Amazon. You can see there's a search bar allow you to type any keyword which will search over all kinds of data entity including data, currently support data set, user and dashboard. And you will see all the tags that is a uh, help user to group different uh, data set. You could bookmark data set as well. Lastly, there is showing the popular tables that is used by most of the people in the organizations. Search data set. So you could search like uh, type any keyword and you will search the data sets. Provide you, uh, and the, the result is weighted based on the uh, data set usage. Once you find out a data set you want, you will click through and, and see the details of the data set. For example, you could see the data set uh, schema name, table name, descriptions. If you, we also support an integration with the uh, uh, Jira, and which allow Amazon to be a central portal for data quality issue reporting. If there are any data Jira tickets created, you will link all the tickets here. It's showing the data range, last updated timestamp, 
tax owner and frequent user. It also has a support any arbitrary unstructured metadata to service called programmatic descriptions. On the right hand side, you can see all the columns for this table as well as what's the uh, schema name, uh, the column name, descriptions type. You can also even request description if the description is not available. And you can see like the GitHub source file, the preview and export. So once you click the columns, you can see the description as well in markdown format as well as column statistic. You can see the data preview of the tables. Lastly, for data set, you can also show all the dashboard has been used using this data set. Uh, also, you could search data set as well. It's like, for example, I search Amazon, you will list all the uh, dashboard that has Amazon's term. Here is that once you figure out the dashboard, dashboard is uh, include a lot of user study of a lot of data set. For example, in this one, you, you will see it is a more analytics dashboard. The owner is me. When it has been last created, when it's last successfully run, and what's, what are the dashboard preview, what the table has been using, in fact. You could also search for co-workers. In this case, it's a, I, for example, I, once I search the veterans in the team, I could um, see his profile and see what data set he owns, what data set he bookmark, and what data set he frequently use. So um, here is the impact. Amazon since launch has been consistently hitting more than 700 weekly active users at Lyft because out of like less than 5,000 total employees. And it has been indexed 150K tables by uh, more than 5,000 employees. And in open source, it has a huge adoption. In our Slack community, we have more than 900 users. We have one, more than 150 companies in the community. More than 20 companies uh, is using it in productions. Here is a bit of landscape in our Amazon uh, inclusive diversity uh, community. And Amazon is pretty pluggable and could be extended for different use cases. Here are some uh, short notes about other companies, how do they use Amazon. For example, first one, Amazon, uh, they are using it primarily for data discovery, also integrate with their in-house data quality services, uh, as well as the Delta Analytics platform. Uh, they have a blog post to talk about in detail, you just take a look. ING, is a <coughs> ING build data discovery on, um, on top of Amazon, with Apache Atlas as a store. They care a lot more about security, like Atlas will integrate with Apache Rangers for sort of supporting role-based asset. They contribute a lot Atlas integration to Amazon. They also have a blog post about the whole integration. Workday, Workday build a data discovery on the analytics platform named Goku. Amazon is a landing page for Goku. Square. Square is primarily using Amazon for security and compliance use case. They contribute like the Gremlin and add AWS Neptune integrations. Yeah, a few recent contributions from the community as well. Since we launched dashboard entity, Asana contribute like the redash dashboard integrations. Gusto contribute the Tableau dashboard integration. Brax contribute like the Looker dashboard integrations. And Amos has been contributing the Delta Analytics platform integration. So what is the project's uh, future, like in uh, one or two quarters? So in Q4, Lyft has been solely focused on supporting the data lineage. So working on the UX design to for servicing table lineage. So the RFC on how to support data lineage is coming. And it allows different injection mechanisms like push by SQL parsing, etc. Right. 
<coughs> ML features in 2021 Q1, which is uh, will uh, focus on servicing the discovery of ML features as a separate entity. For example, service uh, feature statistic, service uh, feature upstream data set lineage, service various metadata around ML features. Another one is metadata platform. So currently, to use uh, the metadata, a lot, a lot of users they primarily rely on the front end or Amundsen. But in fact, there's many different services want to programmatic access APIs for pull, read, and write the metadata. For example, we want to expose metadata to BI SQL tooling. For example, service uh, metadata like which table when user is uh, composed their SQL, they will automatically service like what table they should join on what column based on metadata. They integrate with the data calling service to service house for data calling information, support hybrid pull plus push metadata injections. For example, build SDK to push metadata to amongst us through API or Kafka. Thank you. Hello, my name is Prasanth Palavarthi. I'm one of the steering committee members for Onyx and also one of the co-founders. My day job at Microsoft is leading the AI Frameworks team, which contributes extensively to Onyx and develops the Onyx runtime. Today, I'll be sharing an update on Onyx, which is a graduate project of the LFAI. Let's start with a quick recap. While machine learning usage in production continues to grow, the reality is that there are still many challenges to take ML models from research and development to production. There are many great frameworks to choose from. However, supporting and optimizing them on a variety of deployment targets is not easy, requires a lot of work, and takes a lot of time. This is where Onyx plays an important role. Having a standard model format allows data science teams to use their choice of tools while ensuring that their model can be represented in a common way that can be easily run and deployed. Having a standard model format also allows development of acceleration technology and tools against just one format instead of many and reach a broader set of users. Onyx stands for Open Neural Network Exchange. Onyx defines the spec for representing models. The Onyx spec supports both the DNN and traditional ML. Onyx has been a graduate project in the LFAI for almost a year now, thanks to its broad usage and support. One of the strengths of Onyx is the community. As shown here, many companies support Onyx, and the list continues to grow as we regularly add new members. The great thing is that all these companies actually support Onyx in their products. It's not just a spec, it's actually implemented in shipping products. Here's a list of some of the products that support Onyx. You'll recognize many popular tools. The ones marked new have added Onyx support in the last six months or so. We're also happy to have Acumus, another LFAI graduate project, recently add support for Onyx and make it easy to create microservices for hosting Onyx models. In terms of metrics, we track some numbers to measure participation and usage. We expand these over time and have recently added new metrics for dependent repos and wheel downloads. We regularly have community meetings to engage with our worldwide community. These forums are well attended and provide an opportunity to share updates about the project with the community, as well as hear how the community is using Onyx. We very recently had one on October 14th, and you can see some of the presentations from a broad variety of organizations. All the presentations and recordings from this meetup are available on the website. So, as you saw, many companies and organizations are using Onyx. I'll briefly share our experience at Microsoft. At Microsoft, we use machine learning extensively in a wide variety of products. These are products and services that have significant scale and very demanding requirements. As our teams develop new models and seek to deploy them to production applications and services, they run into challenges. These are the same challenges that everyone across the industry faces. We have tight inference latency requirements. Our models are being trained in Python, but need to be deployed to production targets that don't support a Python interpreter. We need to deploy to edge and IoT devices, which have many size and performance constraints. Sometimes the same model needs to be deployed on a diverse set of clients with different platforms and configurations. 
In several cases, we are building a platform that needs to support models provided by others in different formats. At Microsoft, teams have chosen to use Onyx and Onyx Runtime to solve the problems of ML productivity. Onyx Runtime is an open source engine for cross-platform accelerated machine learning. It supports the entire Onyx spec and is highly optimized. I'll share a few examples of how it's being used in Microsoft. Azure Cognitive Services makes use of Onyx and Onyx Runtime in scenarios ranging from computer vision to natural language processing to speech. For example, the speech service saw a 10x reduction in time to productize new models, in addition to a latency improvement. Due to the agility improvements, they were able to develop and deploy new models that increased accuracy as well. Some teams like Azure Connect need to support deployment on a variety of edge devices, ranging from Windows PCs to Linux-based IoT appliances. With Onyx Runtime, they're able to use the same model and the same APIs. Here we see Onyx Runtime running on a laptop and small devices from Intel and NVIDIA. Onyx Runtime's extensibility mechanisms allow it to make use of the best acceleration available on each device, so that the developer gets the benefits of a common software stack without having to compromise on performance. Windows ML is the API for Windows developers to integrate ML models into their applications and take advantage of hardware acceleration without having to worry about installing drivers or other toolkits. It uses Onyx as a standard format so that application developers can use the framework of their choice and get excellent performance on a variety of hardware devices. One class of model that many people have started using, especially for NLP tasks, are transformers. Some popular transformers include BERT and GPT-2. These models yield excellent results, but are very challenging to operationalize due to their size. Onyx supports these models, and Onyx Runtime delivers exceptional performance for them, as you can see in the charts here, taken from some recent blogs jointly authored by the Onyx Runtime team and Hugging Face, which is a company that specializes in transformers. It's worth noting that Onyx Runtime is how the teams at Microsoft operationalize their transformer models. And if you thought inferencing transformer models is hard, training them is even harder, which is why Onyx Runtime now supports accelerating the training of these models as well. It's available as a preview and is being used by teams at Microsoft as well as some of our customers. So I've talked about how many companies, including Microsoft, are using Onyx. So it's likely that you may already be using it too. But if you aren't already using Onyx, you can get started easily. First, the Onyx Model Zoo provides a variety of pre-trained models. Most of them have detailed instructions for how to use the model as well. If, if pre-trained models are not sufficient, you can convert your own model to Onyx. Some frameworks like PyTorch have Onyx support built in. For other frameworks, there are tools that help you generate Onyx models. Once you have an Onyx model, you can inference it using a tool like Onyx Runtime. Onyx Runtime has a variety of language bindings, works on Linux, Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS, and integrates with many popular accelerators, including those from NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, and more. One quick way to get started is with the Onyx Docker container. You can follow the instructions on the website to pull down this container image and run through several example Jupyter notebooks. You've seen how Onyx is being used and how you can get started with it. So what's next? Well, it's really up to the community. Onyx has open governance and we invite everyone to participate. There are regular SIG and working group meetings. Technical discussions and code live on GitHub. We also have active channels on the LFAI Slack for announcements and discussions. And make sure to sign up for our mailing list. We use these forums to communicate about upcoming events like the community meetups, as well as technical discussions about the roadmap. In fact, we recently had several sessions to develop the roadmap for Onyx. We have a few more coming up and we welcome you to join and share your input. Well, thanks so much for having me here. I'm very excited about Onyx and I hope you are too. I'll leave you with some key URLs to remember and I'm happy to take any questions. Hi everyone, my name is Bruce and I'm from the NG project. Thanks to OSS and the summit organizers is a good opportunity today to introduce the recent progress of the NG project. 
In this talk, I will firstly give an overview of the engine system. Then I will show the features in the latest release version 3.1 and also the status of engine open source community. At last, I will preview the features in the coming new release. Angular is an open source machine learning framework. It could be summarized in four aspects. Firstly, Angular has very high performance in model training with trillions of sparse feature dimensions. And it has been particularly optimized for the advertising recommendation scenario. It could be five times faster than other systems. Secondly, Angular is a full stack system and has a collection of more than 50 well implemented algorithms, including traditional machine learning, deep learning, graph embedding, and federated learning. Thirdly, Angular is an open source and has already graduated from LFAI Foundation in the end of last year. So far, Angular project has total 11 sub projects and has received 6,000 stars and been forked by 1,500 times. Finally, Angel has been widely deployed in production clusters and used in various businesses like advertising, financial service, social analysis, and so on. For example, there are 1,000 daily Angel tasks in Tencent. Angel has a full stack for machine learning pipeline. More specifically, it could be easily integrated with other ETL tools, and then it provides facilities from feature engineering, model training to model validation, and also the auto machine learning for parameter tuning. At last, Angel can serve the model for inference. Upon the basic framework, there are easy to use visual modeling, model management platform, model servant platform for better use. There are two kinds of portals for the end users, the Tesla portal and Taiwan on the cloud. Here is the system architecture of Angel. The bottom fundamental layer is Angel core math library. In the framework, the key module is Angel Parameter Server, which stores the global model to update during training. Besides the Angel native runtime, Angel is also integrated with other runtime such as Spark, PyTorch, and so on. On the top level, Angel has auto machine learning and server models that could be accessed while interactive layers on the cloud. Recently, we released the version 3.1 on main 6. Here I show several key improvements and features. First, the parameter server has been improved significantly. In the third side, Angel supports auto model sharding across multiple nodes and large scale model, as well as more optimizers. In the executor, it can perform auto training data parallelism and resource sharing among tasks. As for the model level, Engine now provides user customized parameter server functions. Meanwhile, Engine has both hash and range partitioners for different data cases. Also, we try to make an easy platform deployment of Engine. Now it could be deployed in four ways, Hadoop cluster, Kubernetes environment, cloud native manner, and microservice. In this release, we also have a well-development graph learning framework. Especially, we publish a collection of well-implemented graph algorithms, such as traditional learning, graph embedding, and graph deep learning. These algorithms could be used directly in the production model by calling with simple configurations. We also provide an operator API for graph manipulations, including 
building graph and operating the vertex and edges. The graph learning algorithms have been widely used in a variety of applications. While the accuracy has been improved, all the computing time has been reduced significantly. In the open source community, the number has increasing in both contributions and committers. The project have received 6,000 stars and fought 1.5,000 times. The numbers of new committees and pull requests have been increased since the beginning of this year. In the past months, we have organized four technical meetups. The events are all online due to COVID-19. The events attract nearly 1,000 attendants each time. NGL also has close collaborations with other projects in the community. For example, we have installed the Acumus C version on our Tencent Cloud Node and onboarded three engine models onto it. We also integrate NGL with an open source job scheduling and dashboard project named Trans. This is a snapshot of job registration with Trans. And this is a view of history of high hyperparameter tuning and its corresponding curve. In the coming new release, we will have a new model, federated learning. As shown in the right figure, two parties A and B have data with the same ideas but the different features. For the privacy reason, we cannot physically merge the two data sets, but now with the new federated learning technique, we can logically join the data sets to train a single model. Here we only exchange the global model parameters rather than the raw data to keep the privacy. All the transportations are encrypted. The federated learning models of NGL will be open, open source soon with significant improvements in safety performance, usability, and has been demonstrated in real applications. For example, the federated learning module is applied to financial anti-fraud to join financial data and social data. A logistic regression model is jointly trained and show improvement in AUC up to 15% comparing with traditional local model. Okay, this our recent update of Angel project. It is also in continuous progress. If you have any questions about Angel projects, please send mail to me at this address. Thanks. Bye. Hello, I'm Julian. I'm the project lead for Marquez and also the CTO and co-founder of Datakin. Today, I'm going to give you an update on the project. So to start with a quick agenda, I'm going to start with the problem statement, then the ongoing effort, mention the open lineage effort we have ongoing and talk a little bit about our regular community meeting. Uh, first, the problem statement. Uh, Marquez came out of the need to create a healthy data ecosystem. And to create a healthy data ecosystem, you want to make sure teams are able to move uh, independently uh, in an agile way while not creating friction. So usually as um, organization grows and there are more and more teams responsible for their own transformation of data, their own consumption, their own metrics, uh, it creates a lot of friction um, amongst team interdependencies. And one good way to fix that is to add better visibility on those dependencies and create explicit contracts. When it's about data, I've been um, working on this Maslow's data hierarchy of needs. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is about before uh, looking for happiness, you need to have shelter, you need to have food, you need to be safe. And then you can look into uh, being happy and um, other things. And the data hierarchy of needs is in the same way. You need to first have your data available, 
and then it needs to be fresh. And once it's fresh, you need to ensure that it's good quality. And then you can look at how to use it to uh, optimize your business or to grow new business opportunities. So this is really the underlying need of understanding how data is available or it is not, whether it's on time or late, or uh, its quality. And so this is done through collecting metadata, which uh, Marquez is about. So currently ongoing effort on the project, um, there's an uh, ongoing effort on improving the SQL support, um, so improving the SQL parsing, um, in particular, particular that works well for all Postgres derivatives, uh, like Redshift, Snowflake, and uh, similars, and Postgres itself. Um, Marquez provides schema versioning, so whenever a job runs, it's going to keep track of uh, what's the new version of the schema and what version of the job changed it. Another ongoing effort is BigQuery support. Uh, the BigQuery API provides information uh, through the job details. Um, in particular, it provides information about which data sets are being read from and what data set is being written to. And uh, it enables capturing uh, metadata like the query plan and the query profile and other interesting information. We, there are also work on experimental Spark support. There's still work to do. And uh, basically the way it works is using a Java agent um, to inspect the logical plan as the job is running. So internally, uh, Spark has a listener mechanism that lets you know that a job is started and the job is finished and what its logical plan, which is physical plan and so on, which lets you also one, uh, inspect the lineage and second, have information about what's the logical plan, what's the query profile at the time it's running. And so this applies to all the data set based uh, jobs or Spark SQL. And uh, there's also uh, support for old school uh, RDD jobs. Other aspect of markets that is currently improving, um, there's uh, some ping off a technical depth on the UI and a visual improvement to improve the, the visual aspects to the CSS, as well as revamping the current uh, graph layout for the lineage view. So those should have um, drastic improvements to the current uh, UI experience. The last thing um, I wanted to talk about is our open lineage initiative. And so the goal is standardize uh, lineage and metadata collection, um, not just for Marquez, but across the entire data ecosystem. And so the current problem today is um, that there's lots of complexity. Um, there's lots of different projects um, like Amundsen, which is also an LFAI project that we heard about today. Uh, Data Hub, Marquez, Atlas, or a bunch of others that are all like needing lineage from a bunch of different sources, whether they're more like pandas, Spark, or schedulers, or warehouses, or other SQL and Hadoop type things. And so there's lots of duplication of effort, and there's a lot of um, catch up work happening on being able to stay in sync with the way to extract data, uh, metadata from those projects. So if the effort we're starting is to have an open lineage standard so that all those projects that uh, use lineage can use a single standardized uh, metadata spec so that we can share the effort of integration as well as um, avoiding having to play catch up and pushing in each project what the implementation is. So this is very similar to open telemetry and the way you would have just an API and that can be pushed as a simple dependency to all those projects uh, to capture the lineage. And then it's up to the user what backend to use, right? So you can write to Marquez, write to um, Amundsen backend, uh, for example. And so that saves um, remove duplication of effort. And also we don't have to play catch up anymore because now this turned out becomes part of every project. And so as part of this lineage, right, if we look at the delineation between Marquez, uh, things like Data Hub and Amundsen, uh, for example, uh, this focuses on the spec of the lineage collection. Uh, like if we take Marquez, for example, Marquez as a storage, as a UI, as a, also the exploration API, and this uh, open lineage uh, is really about just the metadata and lineage collection. And um,
<clears throat> and then you can have multiple backends for this. Uh, last point I wanted to mention is we are holding now um, bi-weekly community meetings. Uh, everyone is invited. Um, notes are sent to the list as well as the invitation. This is on the um, uh, list uh, from the LFAI Foundation website um, where you can find the Marquez Technical Discuss uh, mailing list and it also has a calendar so if you want to keep track of the invitation of the Zoom link. Um, it's happening, the next one is happening on October 29th at 10 a.m. Pacific time and you're all welcome to join and that can be used either to ask questions, to bring up um, improvements that we need to be made to um, suggest uh, contributing to the project. Um, everybody is welcome and we usually start by uh, introduction, introductions of attendees and uh, building the agenda. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, this was my uh, Marcus update for October 2020 and um, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.